Taking the field by surprise and winning the Delano Polo Award is Kurt Pliskin in car number 16, the Power Steering Incorporated Lycoya. Pliskin uh, wasn't expected to win the pole. In fact, uh, the Power Steering Incorporated Lycoyas have been quick this weekend, but uh, the main problem is that they just haven't had the, uh, the single lap speed that I would normally associate with a pole position. In fact, it was a little damp in qualifying, but Pliskin put down a great lap and put himself on pole for this race. Three cars were sent to the back of the grid, both the cats of engineering cars of Yulia Nasova and Yevgeny Kuznetsov for their antics at Carbondale, uh, where they actually ran into each other, but that's not what got them sent to the back, and uh, Ebenezer Quiggles Jr., who's, um, I think he'd rather forget his uh, Carbondale weekend. Also, an interesting name on the promoter's option list, Daniel Melrose, Formula A driver of note. In car number 67, he rolls off the grid, I believe, in 21st, so we'll have to see how well he does here today. Also, the all the Lycoyas, including the uh, Terra International Motorsports cars, have been oddly quick this week. Uh, anyways, love to see how that turns out. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. As we come down to take the green, here is Kurt Pliskin in that green and brown 16 car. Chris Davenport, his first ever front row start in the alert car number six on the outside of the front row. As the field comes flying up, up towards the top of the hill here, there's a bunch of series of... Uh, S. Benz here, but Pliskin begins to pull away as Davenport gives him plenty of space, and I think the rest of the field is going to give Davenport plenty of space, because, uh, well, Chris Davenport, uh, that number six in the car signals exactly how many times he went off in both practice and qualifying. He actually caused a red flag and got his fastest lap taken away, but his second fastest lap was still good enough for second on the grid. Looking at the back of the field, the two red and gold Katsavs and that 53 car, local boy John Parker Jr., he has a TM Master Cup Series win to his name. He's uh, His father, John Parker Sr., uh, won the Master Cup Series Championship back in 1983. So, second generation driver getting another shot in the Tutino. The two Gesslers, Arto Kakinen and Matthias Taub. The two Scandinavian Warriors in the Gesslers. Having a pretty good start to this weekend. Gessler did uh, a fair bit of testing here. And it's appearing to pay off. Uh, well, Gessler did some off-season testing here. But these two boys are looking pretty strong so far. And uh, great looking liveries too, you get nice uh, shots of them. Going a bit further back in the field, we're looking for two of the promoter's option cars, Paul Lyons in that black and pink car, and there's Daniel Melrose in that 67 car. The Mad Uncle is running in TM Lights these days, and uh, he had his best TM Lights result um, of his season so far at Carbondale, but he was really excited about the TM Lights race yesterday, but uh, well, he got taken out very early in the race, and I don't think he was very happy about that. Uh, here is Jacob Eichelts and Frank. Oh, Frank Azure around. We got a lot of the independent trophy cars running over each other. Jacob Eichelts, uh, Frank Azure, both into the tires and out of the race. And we're about to find out. And it uh, looks like uh, one of them got hooked. Uh, yes, here's Joel Rodriguez in the 86 car. Just runs up into Eichelts, who was trying to stay off the curb. Rodriguez in the 86 takes himself out of the race. He would have gotten an active time penalty. Friedrich Jaeger took... A Frank Azure into the tires and out of the race. Jaeger got himself an active time penalty. And as I said, Rodriguez would have gotten a time penalty, but he eliminated himself immediately. So uh, the independent trophy car is all at the back, and they, half of them have tripped over each other. Here's Paul Lyons into the back of Lewis Kingston. These two have uh, not exactly tangled this weekend, but uh, they haven't exactly been giving each other too much space on track, let's just say. And uh, there you go. We've got t uh, two active time penalties in... Um, the space of uh, half a minute. So there you go. Great work there, guys. Uh, here's Luciano Savaral, who was by far the quickest car in all the practice sessions. The hottest Walter cars had, believe it or not, about half a second on the rest of the field. We don't know where that pace went in qualifying. I know Adrian Devereaux was complaining about back markers. And when I mean back markers, I mean slow cars. But Luciano Savaral didn't really have an excuse. Didn't give one either. He just said he wasn't fast enough. Roderick now on Davenport in car number six. Leonard Roderick in the number four Volpe, one at Carbondale, and his confidence has certainly been buoyed by that. He is looking forward to this one, and this number four car is probably going to be the greatest challenge challenger to the Hodges Walter cars, assuming that the Hodges Walter cars can actually make their way through the field. As Roderick and Davenport begin to reel in the 16 car, it looks like. Roderick on the inside of Davenport, hard on the brakes, but Davenport's a brave man. Also, Roderick makes a great move stick, but Kurt Pliskin, very, very slow there. Under braking in that 16 car. Wonder if something's wrong there. With the Lycoya, that would be a disaster for Pliskin, but Davenport a bit slow off the final corner. Roderick on the outside. 
And the Gesslers now begin to swarm all over this. And we've got Michael Sykes in the five car closing in. And along with one of the Lynx cars, Melanie Cleveno. But Roderick sweeps into the lead from third to first. Davenport is slowing. There is definitely a problem with the six car of Chris Davenport. As I believe he does have a puncture on that car. That's That would be my, uh, my first guess because I haven't seen any smoke coming out of that car. Adrian Devereaux being very, very tentative around Davenport. And granted... I would be too, but um, Davenport very wisely pulling it off to the side, letting everyone else go by. Um, oh boy. Whoa, we got contact in the back between... Oh, he, oh no, you've got to be kidding me. Let's have a look at this in replay. That's Peter Short, four-time world champion, and that's one of his big Formula A rivals right behind him. And... Oh no, if there's any two people that could run into each other... Um, and create a rather amusing headline. It would be Peter Short and Daniel Melrose. Peter Short gave Melrose so many headaches in Formula A, but um, that's a time penalty for Melrose. It's his first Master Cup start, but so um, I'm going to have to write that off as ambition getting the best of him. Here's Chris Johans in car 29, the Manic Core Engineering car. He's had a promising weekend, but uh, unfortunately things go wrong for him early. He brings a 29 car into the pits. Manicor Engineering does their best to try to fix this car, but uh, Johans is never able to get that car back out on the racetrack, unfortunately. Adrian Devereaux in car number one is having a uh, decent start to this race, but it looks like he's beginning to slow as well, uh, because uh, that's uh, Davina Henton in the v underpowered uh, Lynx. Yes, Devereaux is slowing because Henton pulled away from him, and that car is not very fast. As you see a lot of other, as you see, I think that's 88 car stacking up behind him. Devereaux pulled over to the right to let everyone else go by. Very courteous of the two-time reigning champion. But Adrian Devereaux in trouble early. And we got contact. That's Davenport and Stoidler in trouble. And uh, we're going to watch here. Davenport uh, hasn't come into the pits yet. I think he's um, coming in this time by. But we're going to see what uh, Scott Stoidler and Davenport And Davenport just runs into the back of the uh, 28 car. Takes both of them off the road. Um, I think the, uh, well, I don't know about that. Stoiler may have moved over on Davenport because Davenport did have two wheels in the grass. Didn't exactly have anywhere to go. So I think the, uh, the stewards were willing to write this one off as a racing incident. Or rather that Stoiler kind of, uh, instant karma right there. The officials have been known to do that to, uh, not penalize someone for an incident where, um, they get the worst of it. Um, <clears throat> Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car is, uh, oh no, we got a lot of punctures early in this race because I think the 16 is slowing because Melanie Cleveno, Melanie Cleveno is a talented driver, but that car is not very good, should not be able to pass him that quickly, and Pliskin brings it in early. Disaster for Power Sting Incorporated. Also, disaster for the local hero, John Parker Jr. from Cartersville. It's his only scheduled Master Cup Series start for the year, and it ends very early. He'll be running this, his father's famous 53 in the ASCC this year. So, uh, very unfortunate for him. Here is Leonid Roderick, who's now assumed the lead of the race in the number four Volpe. As he has got a fairly big lead over Arto Kekin and Michael Sykes. And Melanie Cleveno is up to fifth. Gaspar D'Souza and Greg Woodard. Great starts for those two. As you go further down the field, you see Pliskin, Davenport, and Devereaux have all made it into the pit lane. Melanie Cleveno in car number 12 has been doing her usual fan tours with her usual endless enthusiasm. Um... You want someone who is completely unperturbable. It's probably Melanie Cleveno, who can always put a bright spin on everything. She was eliminated very early on at Carbondale after a great showing early on, but uh, she was all smiles at the end of the race. That's the kind of attitude a team like Lynx needs, considering their troubled offseason. Gaspar D'Souza has been doing a few fan tours as well, and quite frankly, he's the surprise of the season so far, because I don't think anyone expected the Port this Portuguese rookie to... Uh, not really a rookie, it's his uh, second full season. I don't think anyone expected him to be this quick right out of the box. Here is Luciano Savaral, car number three, going after Greg Woodard again. Woodard, the uh, Lycoya golden boy, but uh, you can see why he's Lycoya's golden boy. He's got a lot of talent. But here comes Luciano around the outside of the final corner. That's a bold move as Woodard fights back. Woodard hanging on in the 41 car. Greg Woodard and Luciano Savaral battling like it's the last lap. Just shows the true racer in both of them. And Woodard's going to hold on to it, I think. Yes, Greg Woodard pulls it off. Holding off the uh, the uh, superior Colton Morel Altair of Luciano Savarol. And Luciano Savarol gave it a very good go. Here's Zelda Ashby, who is uh, sort of uh, made a record of herself as being somewhat of a stealth bomber. She kind of just...
quietly sneaks through the field, and at the end of the race, you know, Zelda Ashby finds herself very high in the results, running in the top 10 right now. I'd say that uh, trend is continuing. Adrian Devereaux is coming back on track, but he's one lap down. As you see, he merges right in between 4th place Taub and 5th place Melanie Cleveno. So, um, we have to see if Adrian Devereaux is going to get in the way. But considering how fast this car is, I'm not sure that Devereaux will, be, uh, uh, will actually be uh, a slow back marker. I think he might be even more annoying because uh, he might be fast. Now, here's Michael Sykes in car number 5. The Welshman has probably more experience in this track than the rest of the field put together. He's done so many sports car and endurance races, and he's won here before in several different categories and classes. Uh, look out for this five car today. He didn't have the speed, but he has the experience. Packer Carroll in car number two needs a good race this season. He hasn't had any points this year. He sits last in the championship on negative 30, and um, he's running right now in 10th uh, in, uh, place, I believe, but his teammate, uh, Lena Roderick, is way out in the lead. Um, but I think that's what people expected from Packer Carroll. It's so far a reasonable performance. Here is Tommy Moore. Tom Moore, the man who lost the Independence Trophy last year by a slim margin, almost gave Lycoya their first Independence Trophy in their first attempt. He is having a very, very good start to this race in car number 52. Back with the same team, same everything really with that uh, organization. So um, he's giving that 52 bunch a great start to the year, to their season rather. And uh, we hope to see a lot of more. And uh, may, it's a kind of surprise he didn't get a full time ride with anyone. But uh, well, it's just kind of how the chips fall. Nick Dawson, Canadian rookie, right behind Ben Atkins in the 50 car. Yeah, another one of the Independent Trophy cars, the second of the Terra International Motorsports cars. He ran at Carbondale, but he wasn't much of a factor. However, uh, things aren't going so much better for him right now. He's stuck behind the Tutino. Atkins doing everything he can to keep Dawson behind him in the uh, uh, far superior Lycoya, but it uh, yeah, looks like uh, Atkins just couldn't hold on very long. Uh, Gaspar D'Souza has now come under attack from Luciano Savarol after Savarol got by Woodard fairly easily, and D'Souza is going to try to fight back, but Luciano just had such a huge run coming through the first two corners, and D'Souza doesn't really have any response to that in the uh, double zero car. As Ian Cooper is now out from 14th place in the triple seven car. I was just about to go talk about him, but uh, unfortunately the uh, second of the team EFR cars, his day ends early in that bright, bright orange and black car. He pulls it over to the right to let some of the other uh, lead lap traffic go by. That's courteous of him. Arto Kekin in car number nine is now being challenged by Michael Sykes, but there's a problem with the nine car and he just passed Pitt in. Oh no, Arto Kekin in serious trouble in car number nine and that he was in he was running in second place he had such a good start to this one but he goes out very early on luciano is really flying in that car number three he is now going by melanie cleveno in car number 12 cleveno tries to fight it but really it's amazing that the lynx car is even running in the top 10 as now cleveno's in trouble melanie cleveno car number 12 in trouble it's a pretty warm day here and uh I'm kind of surprised that we see this many mechanical problems, but given the heat out today, that's not a surprise, I guess, um, now that I think about it. Here is Davina Henson in the other Lynx car. Now, Lynx has been having a lot of reliability problems in preseason testing and uh, throughout uh, practice sessions here, but uh, Henson and Woodard battling over, I believe, sixth place, so I think Henson's got to be concerned now that her teammate, Cleveno, went out of the race. Uh, Melanie Cleveno, though, uh, was all smiles after running as well as she had. Here's Kevin Dwyer in car number 72 from St. Cloud, Minnesota. In car 72, his father's famous 72. He's running in uh, 11th place, I do believe, in this uh, Schaefer group, uh, Juno. Kevin Dwyer having a solid day so far. He was one of the fan favorites last year, and we'll see how he can, he's able to do today. However, one of the new fan favorites coming onto the grid, we have Jenny Kuznetsov in the Katsuv. From the back of the grid in 38th, he's now up to 19th. The uh, the young Russian rookie, very personable man. Uh, he's uh, definitely brought a lot of entertainment to the uh, uh, TM Master Cup Series paddock. And there's another guy right in front of him, Ebenezer Quiggles Jr., who's done likewise. Here's Scott Stoidler in the 28 car. He's had a, a very miserable day so far. I think he's going to be needing some... Uh, oh, yep, Stoidler's day is done. I saw the a puff of smoke out of that car. And he is out of the race as well. However, he was not a factor as Michael Sykes and Matthias Taub do battle for second. But the Gessler is going to power by Michael Sykes in the five car as Matthias Taub moves up to second. And now Taub 
challenging Leonid Roderick for the race lead. And if you're wondering where Michael Sykes went, well, Michael Sykes came into the pits on the end of lap 13. So we're just past the one quarter mark in this race as Roderick now continuing to hold off Taub as here is Michael Sykes leaving the pits in car number five. Pretty good stop for the alert team as he rejoins the track. The Welshman having a strong run so far. Roderick in on the end of lap 14. Matthias Taub in the 10 car stays out. Taub hoping to leapfrog Roderick in the pits as Matthias Taub in this 10 car has uh, not won a race in Sweden last year. Gessler has been, really been looking for an upturn in performances from him. Uh, they weren't really impressed with how his 2012 went, but uh, well, with a brand new livery comes a lot of great new results uh, so far. He's been very quick this year. As Greg Woodard in on the end of lap 14 in car 41. He's been very fast today as well. Great run so far by Woodard. Packer Carroll in in the two car. As you can see, the Manic Orange Engineering crew is still trying to bring that 29 car back out. I don't know why, um, but Taub now coming out of the pits, but Roderick holds on to the lead. Roderick still in the lead. Savaral also came into the pits on the end of lap 15, and now he merges out uh, behind Michael Sykes, as you see Savaral in the background in that green car. Michael Sykes, though, staying in third behind Taub. It looks like he may have lost a little bit of ground to his rival, the Swede, as Gaspar D'Souza, Greg Woodard, and Davina Henson are now going to do battle over fifth place. Gaspar D'Souza, the Portuguese driver, a, having a great run so far. He's trained in road racing, uh, but clearly a very versatile driver, much to everyone's surprise. Zelda Ashby lurking in the mix as well in the 55 as she begins to chase down the 74 of Zach Duff, who's had a very strong start to the season by his standards. He hasn't had the machinery in the past couple of years as Michael Sykes now attacks Taub. Car number 10, Taub trying to hold on. Michael Sykes has just gotten his tires at the temperature, it looks like. Gotten everything up to where it, everything is at its best, and he sweeps around Taub in the 10 car. Now, it looks like Michael Sykes' car may be quicker earlier on in the stint, but later on, the Gessler's, the Gessler really seems to come into form. Uh, so we're going to have to see if Taub is able to run Sykes down, because you see the 5 car beginning to streak away, and Savaral, though, is beginning to work. Oh, no! No, there's a puff of smoke, and, Taub, and Matthias Taub is done! Both the Gesslers are out. And this is before half distance. I don't think there's going to be a single person in the Gessler camp who's going to be happy about today because they were looking like real contenders here. The only one of the Hodges Walter cars really left in contention for the win, Luciano Savarol, car number three, is now in third. Uh, he, oh, that's Friedrich Jaeger just leaving the pit lane in the 256 car. The Vernstrom. Daniel Melrose, I forgot to mention, is also driving a Vernstrom here. This is uh, Vernstrom's first race. It's not in a special event, but Luciano Savarol, car number three, uh, way quicker than the, he and a, teammate Adrian Devereaux, way quicker in practice. As we go back to the 10th place car, Yulian Asova, who started basically at the back of the field, as uh, she's having a fantastic run. Troy Adams behind her running in, um, is uh, right behind her running in 11th place. But um, Yulian Asova having a great start to this season. Katza doesn't have the same budget they did last year, but they're making a great run of it. Here is Troy Adams. The uh, last year's TM Lights champion giving the Moto a great run. I am Duran. Who are you? I told you my name. It's Duran. Duran. What's so funny? Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. there in 12th place having a bit of fun with his pit crew on the radio. Quiggles, as you can tell from his uh, voice right there, having a lot of fun out there today. He's uh, in a much better, mood, much better spirits than he was last week. Here's Daniel Melrose and the other Vernstrom. Now, if it wasn't for that active time penalty, he'd be in the top 10 right now. So Melrose, a lot of speed there as he slides at a, He's sliding that car around a bit, but Tom Moore in the 52 is going to get by. Great race so far uh, we've had today. Um, as you see, Tom Moore riding it over the curb, trying to keep the 67 behind him, even though that's not really for position. Um, but that uh, time penalty, if it's appeal, that would be for position, but I don't see that happening. Anyways, as now, Zelda Ashby and Zach Duff are beginning to heat, uh, heat up their battle here is Duff in car 74, is uh, having a great start to the year. He's been faster than Kevin Dwyer all weekend. As now, Gaspar D'Souza runs across the Vernstrom of Friedrich Jaeger and uh, gets around him without a problem. Now, D'Souza's hoping that the Vernstrom begins to block Woodard and Henton, and that's unintentionally been the case. Jaeger's holding his line, but uh, I don't think it's the line that Woodard, and especially Henton, wanted him to, to stay in because he's cost them a, quite a bit of time and given D'Souza 
a bit of an extra gap. So D'Souza using the back markers to his advantage uh, in that double zero card. Whoa, Jaeger not exactly giving Henton uh, the kind of space she was looking for. And uh, Henton uh, from London, I don't think, was terribly appreciative of that. Uh, Davina Henton, of course, uh, always one of those drivers out there that uh, has really just kind of had uh, not a whole lot of racing luck in general. Uh, of course, uh, she did win British Columbia last year, but uh, just very luckless driver in general. Here's Packer Carroll, Henton's ex-teammate when she drove at Volpe last year. Uh, of course, Packer Carroll stayed at the team. There's been some, there was a lot of people questioning why, but uh, Packer Carroll is uh, certainly proving, at least today, that perhaps that wasn't such a bad decision to keep him after all. But, uh, although you do have to wonder when Henton in the, uh, the Lynx car is running ahead of him. Here's Zelda Ashby now running down Zach Duff in the 74. Or trying to as Duff comes across Friedrich Jaeger. Jaeger holds his line. That's what you're supposed to do as a lap car. But Zelda Ashby now has a huge run on for Jaeger and Duff gets around Jaeger. And now look how close she is to the 74. Ashby now cuts across hard into the braking zone at the end of the track. And Ashby is going to... No, Duff fights back. But Ashby is right there using the back marker to gain a lot of time. On Zach Duff. Didn't make the pass stick right there, but Ashby is now in perfect position to go after Zach Duff now. Adrian Devereaux in car number one has really been right in between, right in amongst the leaders. He's a lap down, but uh, with the amount of attrition we've had today, um, there's, I see no reason for Adrian Devereaux not to keep pushing as hard as he is because the more lap cars the leaders encounter, uh, Adrian Devereaux could possibly work his way into the points, and he's actually the quickest car on the racetrack. So, um, well, well, oh, Paul Lyons is out of the race in the 44 car. He was running uh, far back in the field because of that time penalty. But the uh, the Ender Construction car for Black Diamond Racing goes out of the race um, right around halfway. Very unfortunate for Paul Lyons of Boston. Race leader Leonard Roderick has encountered the lap car of Chris Davenport, or rather he's about to put Davenport a lap down in that car number six. Roderick now beginning to turn up the heat on Davenport. Davenport, is Davenport going to give him room? Looks like, oh, Davenport almost cuts him off a bit. And he slides it a bit wide. Oh, hang on to it. And, uh, well, that was a bit sketchier than it needed to be. Here is Michael Sykes running way back in second. By the way, Davenport is Sykes' teammate. Uh, not saying that was on purpose because I think Davenport lacks the car control to do that on purpose. But anyway, Michael Sykes is uh, trying to run down Adrian Devereaux and get by the one car, but at the same time, Devereaux in the uh, in the one is trying to run down Davenport because that is a battle for position. Devereaux and Davenport, whereas Michael Sykes is uh, just hoping that Devereaux doesn't hold him up so that Luciano Savarol doesn't become a problem because those two, of course, are teammates. And here's the battle between Devereaux and Davenport beginning to unfold as Michael Sykes deals with Savarol in the background as uh, Davenport in car number six from San Francisco trying to hang on to this car as much as he can. He's a, definitely a very colorful personality, uh, is Chris Davenport, but uh, anyways, speaking of colorful personalities, here's Yevgeny Kuznetsov, car number 8, he's running in, uh, I believe, 16th place, 15th or 16th, he's having a pretty strong run today in the Cats of, in the cats of car, but uh, uh, Kuznetsov just it doesn't look like he has the horsepower really to run at the front where he probably should be, oh no, and nor does he have the reliability either because the Cats of is gone, Kuznetsov out, Huge disappointment for all of Kuznetsov's fans because he was having a fantastic run today in the Cats of Engineering, car number eight. Ah, oh, he's got to be disgusted because uh, he had a great run so far and uh, he's obviously got a fair bit of talent with him, but uh, very, very unfortunate for Kuznetsov to exit the race so early. As we're back up now with Michael Sykes in car five as uh, Chris, oh, Davenport again. Well, at least Davenport gave Sykes a bit of room there and uh, didn't pose too much of an obstacle. Now let's see if Davenport does a hatchet job in Luciano Savarol's race. So, um, so here is Davenport in the six. As you can see, Sykes is kind of getting away. But Luciano Savarol hasn't exactly been sticking his nose in to get by Davenport either. So um, Chris Davenport from San Francisco just uh, holding position at the moment. But... Uh, what, it remains to be seen whether or not how hard he'll be um, uh, impeding the leaders, how hard he'll be uh, to get by. Adrian Devereaux in Carnival 1 is faster than the leader of the race, Leonid Roderick, and that's why you see Devereaux running Roderick down. Now, he's off cycle because of that puncture early in the race, and um, 
I think it's beginning to show at this point in the race as Devereaux really running down the four car. Now he's really beginning to hound Leonard Roderick, who I don't think is going to be terribly appreciative of Adrian Devereaux, uh, who pre uh, hounding him as hard as he is, especially when Devereaux has been uh, um, given some of Devereaux's rhetoric towards slow back markers. And Devereaux makes a bold move. I don't think he needed to be that aggressive to get by Leonard Roderick, but that's Peter Short in front of him, and that's for position between Devereaux and Short. So Devereaux unlaps himself a bit more aggressively than I think Roderick was exactly uh, hoping for, and um, or counting on, rather. And, uh, well, now Devereaux going after Short in the 22. Now can Roderick use Devereaux to get through some of the back markers a little easier and follow him through? Uh, no, Roderick being very a bit more tentative. Because Devereaux driving very aggressively at the moment in car number one. Um, some people in the Volpe camp, I think, were um, asking the officials to warn Devereaux for uh, some of his very aggressive passes. But um, they official, the, uh, the stewards did nothing about it. So Roderick and Short. Now, uh, well, Short letting Roderick by there. Here's the car that I think may be the key in the race at this point. Michael Sykes, because the result of this race may hinge on how quickly Luciano Savarol can get by him. I don't think Savarell is faster than Roderick, but uh, Sykes hasn't, exa uh, hasn't exactly uh, well been at uh, race-winning speed. As you see here, Gaspar D'Souza is still fourth, Woodard is still fifth, and Greg Woodard is slowly closing in. It is Michael Sykes in car five, getting around Peter Short in the 22. The four-time world champion has uh, about in his uh, 2013 campaign is uh, um, oh, is here comes Savarell. Luciano Savarol coming through now. Savarol using the four-time world champion to get through and get by Michael Sykes. Peter Short, who's been one of the most unlucky men in TM Master Cup Series racing, about as unlucky this year as Henton was last year. But uh, as you see uh, now, Short really getting in the way of Michael Sykes, a legend in his own right in a touring car and endurance racing. But Luciano Savarol has gotten through to second. And now, as you can see, Savarol is now going to chase down Roderick. Uh, he... He was really holding it back a little bit over the past few laps, but I think this three car might be quicker than Roderick on the long runs. So we'll have to see. As Michael Sykes in the five car now settles back in third, as Luciano Savarol pulls away, as uh, Sykes has now gotten rid of Peter Short in the uh, 22 car. Car number five, Michael Sykes really, really hoping for something to, go, to happen up out in front of him because I don't think he has the pace to win this race. That car just isn't as good as uh, Roderick's and Savarol's. Packer Carroll is slowing on track in car number two. He's going to bring that car to the pits. Another punctured tire. The uh, tire compound brought to this race was unusually soft as Michael Sykes into the pits on lap 28 and lap 28. So here we go. The second uh, flat, uh, second round of pit stops begins. Gasper D'Souza in the double zero in. In the uh, the distinctive Clefer Media car. Nasova in the seven car in. Leonard Roderick in on lap 29. So the, uh, the Volpe team is... Uh, Looks like they're going to play it a little conservatively, but Luciano Savarol does one hot lap, comes in on lap 30. Savarol really stretching it a bit as Savarol leaves the pits. Where's Roderick? Savarol takes the lead, but Roderick's got a great run coming up the hill. He's got warm tires, and there it goes. Roderick by Savarol around the outside. Roderick and Savarol. This is going to be the battle for the win, it looks like. Savarol hanging on, but Roderick is not willing to give up as Roderick goes through playing uh, as hard as he can to try to keep Luciano behind him. And that's Roderick's teammate, Packer Carroll, right in front of him. Packer Carroll is several laps down uh, as the number two car stayed in the pits for a bit longer than he expected. Now, here's where Packer Carroll can really do himself a lot of good as a teammate and let Roderick through. But I don't see Packer Carroll exactly doing that. I have, uh, we're going to have to see. Is Packer Carroll going to let him through up here? You see, he's two laps down. He's way out of it. But no, he's not. Packer Carroll getting in the way of, of his teammate and who's leading the race and could possibly lose this race because of the way Carroll's impeding him. I don't I don't know if uh, Packer Carroll's is not paying attention or what, but the Volpe team was screaming at him to let Roderick go by, but he has not done so. I don't uh, entirely know what the deal with that is. Um, I'm pretty sure the radio's working over there. Uh, yeah, well, his fan base will come up with a convenient excuse, no doubt, as Greg Woodard has gotten by Gaspar D'Souza, and they're all in their equally epic battle for fourth place. Greg Woodard and Gaspar D'Souza trying to do their best to be best of the rest, seemingly. But uh, here is Zelda Ashby, who's now gotten by Davina Henton, and who is really tearing through the field. 
<clears throat> Ashby in car 55 has just done a tremendous job today in that car. Zach Duff in car 74 looks like he's lying low for a bit. No one really around him right now, but uh, Duff's doing a good job today so far. And here is Daniel Melrose, who, um, well, if he didn't have that time penalty, he'd be much further up. But I'd have to say that other than that um, rather silly collision with Peter Short, he's actually done a very good job today um, in this 67 car, considering it's his first start and in a car that doesn't really have too many Master Cup starts under its belt. Good job for him. Adrian Devereaux was scored in 11th place, but here he is in the pits. He is clearly off cycle. Packer Carroll is uh, actually pulled away from Leonid Roderick, his teammate, but Luciano is reeling Roderick in. Now the Volpe team is still telling Packer Carroll, get out of the way and let and let Leonid go by. I wonder if that's code for block Luciano Savarov. It's now the encounter Friedrich Jaeger in the number 256, Vernstrom. Packer Carroll now makes a move on, Ver on the Vernstrom, but Roderick is following him. Now Luciano coming through in car number three. Roderick throws the block on Savarov. And now he's going to make a move around Packer Carroll. Why on earth did that take as long as it did? The Volpe team was throwing out pit boards, everything, to make sure that Packer Carroll was paying attention. But at some point, now Packer Carroll's beginning to slot in behind Roderick. And now he's holding up Luciano Savarol. There we go. That's actually what Packer Carroll probably should have done four laps ago. But uh, that took way too long to do that. I don't really know what the deal over there was, and Roderick was none too happy about that. Uh, that his teammate was holding him up, but now Packer Carroll looks like he's trying to uh, regain favor with the Volpe team, and he's holding up Savarol in the three car. So, uh, Packer Carroll and Luciano Savarol are giving each other headaches as Michael Sykes in the five car smells blood. As, yes, Savarol finally gets by Packer Carroll, but Packer costs Luciano uh, a bit of time as well. Michael Sykes closing in in car number five. So, uh, in two races so far, Packer Carroll, or three races so far, two of them, Packer Carroll has been, uh, well, a bit of an obstacle. Troy Adams and Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. continue to have good, quiet runs in, um, I believe, ninth and 10th. But uh, Quiggles Jr. is still joking with his team over the radio. Uh, you may question Quiggles Jr.'s seriousness half the time, but uh, trust me, very serious racing driver there, and... Uh, the Sealander clearly having a good run today. He's having, a, he's having a lot of fun with it today. As the battle for the lead begins to heat up again. As this race begins to close out between Leonid Roderick in car number four for Volpe Racing Team and Luciano Savarol in the number three Hodges Walter Racing Car. As we look a bit further back in the field, it looks like... Who are we looking for? It looks like Greg Woodard in the 41 car. Woodard sitting a solid fourth place in the Lycoya. This is uh, his best run since his runner at Carbondale as Scott Bates slows down on the racetrack in the 88 car. Scott Bates, who's had mechanical issues all day long. That's why we haven't seen much of him. But uh, looks like Scott Bates' day may be over. But, uh, Luci but as Greg Woodard in the 41 car continues to have a good run here, Luciano Savarol is now closing on Leonid Roderick. And Packer Carroll really held up Michael Sykes in the background because Sykes is much further away than he was before as Roderick throws the block. On Savarol, this four car is becoming a bit of a brick wall because Savarol is uh, having a uh, very difficult time getting by Roderick. Wonder if Ian Cooper's driving that four car because uh, the, some of Roderick's defensive driving there I think might be a bit questionable. The four time champion really wants to win still, you can tell from the way he's driving. As a Savarol having a very, very difficult time getting by Roderick. Savarol won this race last year and it was his first of his two Master Cup Series wins as Roderick continuing to hold on tight. Here's Greg Woodard and the car 41 as he's encountering two, uh, two back markers, Peter Short and Friedrich Jaeger. Woodard is closing in on them so quickly that they can't even get out of the way in time. He got into the back of Short a little bit. Now three wide on the inside. In the last couple of corners. And oh, the Vernstrom got in the back of Short. And Woodard is off. The fourth place car is off. Woodard, car number 41, just got taken out by uh, games that are being played by two lapped cars. Peter Short and Friedrich Jaeger, who weren't even racing each other for position. So that was some just some absolutely insane driving. And if Woodard is, uh, and Woodard has every right to be upset about that. The Power Sitting Incorporated team hasn't had a whole lot of luck in the past few years. This was their best run I've seen in quite some time. As you see, uh, Woodard got into the back of Short, who in turn got into the uh, 256 car. And you see... Vern, the uh, Jaeger put Woodard in, and Short in a no-win situation there. And uh, 
That's just the end result. Some some ludicrous driving by some of the backmarkers late in the event, and Woodard is going to drop all the way to seventh. But even still, he was he was having such a good run, and uh, very very unfortunate for Greg Woodard in car 41. So, anyways, back up to the battle for the lead between Luciano Savarol and Leonid Roderick as the race begins to close out. Roderick is holding off Luciano Savarol as Savarol continues to get closer and closer. Down through the final corner, we're going to see... Oh, Roderick may have slid it a bit wide as Savarol backed off just a little bit. I think Savarol may have tried to uh, have avoided a crash there. But uh, Roderick in the four and Savarol in the three. Now going up the hill, they are nose to tail. This is some of the closest racing I have seen in uh, probably since uh, the middle of last year. But Roderick and Savarol are still fighting for this win, for everything they've got. Just a couple laps to go. Roderick in the four, Savarol in the three. Michael Sykes in the back is not a factor. Savarol makes the move. It's just two laps to go. As now Savarol makes the move coming off the, coming around. Roderick hits the curb. He loses the back end. They make contact. Roderick and Savarol both off. They're both off. And Savarol, huge damage to the Hodges Walter three car. Roderick in the four car. He may have hit the curb just a little bit. But Michael Sykes is going to be grinning ear to ear because Roderick and Savarol have wiped themselves out of first and second. A sure first and second. These two drivers were giving this race 115% when it probably didn't require that. Here we go. Luciano gets on the inside. And I think Roderick either hit the curb or he just turned right into the back of Luciano. And that takes both cars out of contention. And uh, landed Roderick. Car number four is going to drop way back through the orders. There goes Michael Sykes in the alert. Car number five, the red five, goes through to the lead. Here we look at it from above. Savarol makes the move. Roderick gives him plenty of, uh, plenty of space. Savarol runs him a little bit wide there. And Roderick, uh, I don't think he hit the curb. If he did, it was very slight. But... It looked to me as if Roderick just turned right into Luciano Savarol and took him out. So um, I don't. I think Roderick's just been uh, having a bit of red mist today. But there you see Michael Sykes go by. Very uncharacteristic maneuver by Leonid Roderick. But the damage has been done. And now there goes Michael Sykes. Luciano Savarol is unable to complete the final lap in car number three. And there you see the end result. They've given a time penalty to Roderick in car number four. But a big disappointment for Luciano Savarol in that three car who was fuming in the, inside that car. I can't replay his radio communications without uh, having a, a hand on the uh, sensor. Anyways, here is Michael Sykes in car number five who probably can't believe what he's just seen in front of him. The Welshman has won here at, at Road Atlanta in many different categories and classes of cars, as I mentioned before. But Michael Sykes just has a few corners to go to claim his third TM Master Cup Series win. Under the bridge and down towards the front straightaway as Michael Sykes takes home the win for Alert, the team that Leonid Roderick left at the end of last year. Great win for Michael Sykes. In car number five, Gaspar D'Souza inherits second. Davina Henton in fourth, but Zelda Ashby clawed through the field to get third. And Greg Woodard has got to be absolutely fuming after being taken out by a couple of back markers because that second place that D'Souza had could very easily have been his. Tom Moore, a fantastic sixth place. Zach Duff in seventh. Troy Adams, Ebenezer Quiggles Jr., and Nick Dawson round out the top ten. Kurt Pliskin recovered to a strong 11th in the Power Steering Incorporated 16 car. Kevin Dwyer in 12th. Ike Durbin, Adrian Devereaux, Yulian Asova, Double points for Tutinos, you see there. Leonid Roderick's time penalty dropped him from 9th all the way back to 18th. And there you see, Luciano Savarol didn't even finish the final lap, but he gets a point. These results, as you see them right here, are provisional because both of the Terra International Motorsports cars of Nick Dawson and Ike Durbin failed post-race tech. So there is going to be an inquiry into that, and those two cars could be removed from the results entirely. And those are Independence Trophy cars, so they can't afford to drop that far back in the standings for the Independence Trophy. And that has huge, huge implications for uh, the two Terra International Motorsports like Koyas, who some people say are basically just satellite power steering incorporated cars. And considering how well the PSI cars ran today, I can see why some people would believe that. As if we hadn't had enough drama anyway, 
There was a bit of a pit lane brawl between some of the members of Leonid Roderick's crew and some of the members of Luciano Savaral's crew. I can understand why, but uh, needless to say, it certainly wasn't a pretty sight. And let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship as it sits provisionally, and I do say provisionally given the uh, rather obscene number of penalties that might be handed out after this one. Michael Sykes inherits the championship lead uh, as the virtue of really being one of the few people to not have a brain explosion at some point in the race. Adrian Devereaux in second, more victim of misfortune, but he still rallied for a strong points run. Gaspar de Souza, the surprise package. Watch out for that double zero car. We could see him in victory lane before the year's out. Davina Henton in sixth in the championship. That uh, Lynx racing car has not been anywhere near the kind of pace that Henton has been dragging it up to. A uh, big, big round of applause for Davina Henton for her early season form. Leonid Roderick in the four car. Could be penalties handed out for uh, some of the post-race conduct there. Ike Durbin, we don't know where, what's going to happen to him. Yulia Nasova, Matthias Taub, uh, both had uh, their own forms of adversity. Nasova self-inflicted, Taub's uh, inflicted by mechanical gremlins this season. Savaral in car number three, well, almost won today. Ebenezer Quiggles Jr., Zelda Ashby in the FPO cars. That's a new team, so that's a great showing for them. Rachel Rainsford still sitting in the top 10 in the championship in the 14 car, uh, despite only running one race. Woodard in the 41 has got to be feeling good about his start to the year. Troy Adams as well. Tom Moore, great start to his independence trophy run. Kevin Dwyer, solid start. Chris Davenport, a uh, bit of a sketchy start for the rookie. And Zach Duff rounds out the three-way tie for 18th place and the top 20 in the championship. Now, here's the independent trophy standings, but as I said earlier, the two Terra International Motorsports cars failed post-race tech. We, it remains to be seen what will happen to both of those cars. If what happened to Tutino at Quebec last year is any indication, then we could see Terra International Motorsports, the Timmies, as, we, as I like to call them, disqualified from this race. But uh, the stewards didn't seem to think that the, uh, the performance advantage was significant enough to warrant disqualification, so we'll wait and see how that goes and how that turns out. I think the amount of penalties we'll see handed out after the end of this race will be about as many as it were handed out in last year's Round of England. By the way, that so happens to be the next race as the TM Master Cup Series begins the European Tour.